Hey, today we're going to talk about the proper PM preventative maintenance on a factory cat walk behind scrubber. Step one is we're going to put water in the machine and test run it and check the controls and the operation of the floor scrubber. Now that we've filled the scrubber with water, we're ready to go ahead and test the operation of the machine and test run the machine to make sure that all systems are working correctly. Step one, we're going to turn the key on. We're going to wait for the central command logo to disappear. Just take about three seconds. The operator screen lights up. I'm gonna check each one of these controls, each one of these functions, and make sure that they're operating within spec. So your battery gauge, we're starting off with a full charge. This is my water flow. I wanna take the blue toggle switch, which is located beneath the icon, and cycle that down for less water, and make sure that the LCD is displaying correctly. Also, I wanna go upwards and make sure it's doing the same. Right here is my down pressure and the black toggle switch that controls it is directly beneath the icon. Just like the water flow, I'm gonna click minus to reduce the down pressure and then go back up to make sure that things are operating correctly. These test lights, I will check during the operation of the machine. This is a vac clog light. And then this is for the 03 system that this machine has as an option. My potentiometer for speed, I'll test this during the operation. Make sure that there's no dead spots in it. This drops my scrub deck. I heard the actuator fire. Check my scrub deck, it's indeed on the ground. And then I'm gonna throw the switch in the opposite direction and make sure that the scrub deck comes up, which it did. This green button on the top right of the dash is gonna show me the different hour meters on the screen. I'm gonna make sure that those display. There's no abnormalities. Click it again to go back to the operator screen. I've got drive buttons, one under each handlebar. I'm gonna test each one to make sure that they operate. The one on the left is fine, one on the right, operational as well. And then my reverse toggle switch operates all on its own. I'm gonna pull this back towards me and make sure that the speed is roughly 50% of the forward speed. Okay, so I'm gonna drop the scrub deck. Solution flow and brush pressure is set. I'm gonna rotate my squeegee lever over, squeegee drop, vacuum motor, turned on. We're going to go ahead and start scrubbing with the machine. I'm going to be checking the speed. Also what I'm looking for is making sure that all of my icons are in fact animated. So my brush is animated, water flow is coming out, as well as my vacuum motor uh, showing that it's turned on. Checking these options right here, this is our onboard aqueous ozone that we call 03. It's got two dilution rates, 50%, and then when both of these are illuminated, it's 100%. I'm gonna check those and make sure that they're functioning properly. 50% toggle switch on the left-hand side of your control panel is down in the 50%. The corresponding light on the dash panel is showing 50% as well. Flip it all the way up for 100%. Both lights should be illuminated. That's the way it's operating. Everything looks in spec. Next, I'm gonna check the SUD system. What I should see when I turn that on is six bubbles dancing on the screen. SUDS is our onboard chemical mixing system. There we go, we got six bubbles. That's the lightest dilution setting. It's taking a concentrated cleaner from the front of the scrubber in its own designated reservoir, mixing it in directly to the scrub deck. Now I'm gonna flip it all the way up for the full concentration. I should have 12 bubbles and that's what I see on the LCD. Everything seems to be running well. I did notice during operation that the squeegee is down on the floor a little bit too hard, but we'll fix that at a later point in the PM. Let's go back, drain the machine, rinse it out, and get ready for the rest of the PM. So now it's time to drain the machine. I'm gonna drain not only the dirty water in the tank, but I'm also gonna drain the solution so that we can check some other parts of the scrubber during our preventative maintenance. Back up to my floor drain here. Remember, this is a flexible end of this drain hose. You're going to want to restrict the flow and then slowly open it up so you don't take a shower in dirty water. Solution is drained by taking your sight gauge, removing it from the machine, and you can put that down into the drain as well. While my scrubber is draining, we make this large open cavity for this exact reason. It's very easy to clean out. You wanna go ahead and rinse any of the dirty water and any of the soils that are stuck on the inside of the tank down the drain as well.
While I'm letting some of that drain, I'm going to take off the dirty water intake hose to the recovery tank. I'm gonna go ahead and remove our drain saver. And this debris, I'm gonna clean out in a garbage can and go ahead and rinse it as well. Okay, now that we've drained our recovery tank, rinsed it out and drained our solution tank, we're gonna record all the, uh, the user end user information and get our PM check sheet. For the PM check sheet, I'm either going to scan this QR code or I'm going to go to factorycat.com and enter the serial number uh, and download the PM PDF. Once I have that PDF, I'm gonna go ahead and record the pertinent information for the machine. That's going to include the serial number, the hour breakdown that we showed you earlier via the page button, and then the end user details, including customer name, location, and main contact. We're gonna basically follow the water. We're gonna start with the solution system. I'm gonna inspect the solution fill screen to make sure that this is clean and empty. And I'm gonna inspect our remote drain hose, our fill hose for damage or breaks, tears. Then we're gonna check our inline filter. After the water leaves the solution tank, it is run through a screen filter here. The screen filter is removed with a standard thread we unscrew it, it's always gonna lose a little water, but that's okay, and we'll remove it. In that filter, you should have a metal screen and a bowl. We wanna drain the bowl and rinse it, look for any debris, and we wanna rinse this in a sink. Once we've rinsed it and cleaned it, even if it looks clean, we wanna go ahead and rinse it anyway, because some, sometimes there will be soap or chemical buildup. And then we will replace it back to where it was, being cautious not to over-tighten. Just hand tight. Once we fill the machine, if water drips, it's too loose. If it doesn't, if there's no water coming out, it is appropriate. While we're down here, I'm gonna go ahead and check and inspect my vacuum unloader valve. To do this, I'm gonna give it a pinch and I wanna make sure that it's clean. And I do that by just wiping a rag inside. We want this to be able to open when the vacuum is off. Then we're gonna drain if the machine is equipped with suds, we're gonna drain the reservoir and rinse it. To drain the suds reservoir, I like to start by opening the suds reservoir, get a container, and we're gonna come down to the green hose. Just inside the hose, you will find a valve. And when we open that valve, the suds will drain from the system. Once we've drained all the soap out, what we're gonna do is add some water to the system. Once we've added about a third of the reservoir with water, I'm gonna drain just a little bit of it until we run clear down here, which you can see we are. Now we're gonna operate the machine for five minutes. Well, we're gonna add some water to the solution tank operate the machine in its maximum suds output uh, for five minutes. Now that we've operated it for five minutes with the suds in its maximum output, we're gonna go ahead and drain the remaining water out of the system and clean our recovery tank out. Now that we've finished our solution system and cleaned and rinsed our suds system, we're gonna move on to the scrub decks. On a disc machine, we're inspecting the side curtain. We're gonna look through this to make sure there's no tears, rips, and that it's not overly worn. If they are, we'll remove. In this situation, this is a shroud system. This machine is also, uh, uh, has the, come standard with jaws. Once we've got the shroud removed, we're gonna go ahead and inspect our drivers on our brushes. So in this situation, first thing I'm gonna do is inspect the, the brush hub to make sure that there's no damage. And then I'm gonna inspect the, the driver. Driver is 
here and we want to make sure that it's a clean fit. Once we've got that done on both brushes, we want to go ahead and rotate these. Brushes spin in one direction all the time. If we keep them rotated, it increases performance and durability. Very good. Now, that process is a little different on the cylindrical decks. On a cylindrical de deck, we're, wi we're, we're inspecting the wiper and we're gonna look for tears. Now this one has a tear, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. And I'm gonna replace the set. To replace the curtains, we're gonna go ahead and flip this over and remove these nylon lock washers, nuts. Flip that over, remove the band. And I'm gonna replace this with only an OEM part. Once I have all the bolts in, I'm gonna leave it loose. You'll notice this is slotted and we can account for wear. When I put this back on the machine with the deck down, I'm gonna adjust my height so that there's a slight wiping function on the turn. Once I've replaced the set, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my brushes. I'm gonna inspect this hub for damage or wear. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And I'm gonna inspect the driver and idler for damage and wear and anything wrapped around it. Rotated the back brush to the front and the front brush to the back. We're gonna go ahead and close this up. Then we're gonna raise our tank to inspect the rest of the scrub deck. Once the deck is up, I'm gonna go ahead and inspect my pivots. So I'm inspecting this turnbuckle to make sure it's, it's on. None of the lock nuts are loose and the deck is secure. I'm gonna do that on both sides. Then we wanna make sure that the deck lift mechanism is functioning correctly. We tested that earlier while operating it. So at this point, we're just making sure our pins are all in place and have cotters. We're looking at our brush motors and wires. We're looking for any damage to the wires all the wires are attached to posts. We wanna make sure that those are snug. If they're not, tighten them as needed. Okay. Then we check the deck for level. So the deck is checked for level by lowering the deck and then operating the machine and watching the bubble. If the deck is in level, we proceed to the next section. If it is not level, we're going to adjust that level by these turnbuckles. We'll break the lock nut here and adjust as needed here. Lengthening the turnbuckles tilts the deck forward. Shortening them tilts the deck back. Make sure you do it in unison. If the level is equal for both sides, if one side is down and one side is up, adjust it as needed. All right, now that we've completed our brush deck, we're gonna move on to the squeegee system. First, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my squeegee hose and do the inspection on that. It just makes it easier to work on. So we wanna make sure that there's no tears, clogs, and it's not dry rotted. Then we're looking at our squeegee knobs Make sure they're in good working order. They don't have wrench marks on them as an indicator that they're over tightening. And we'll go ahead and remove that squeegee at this point. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and inspect the blade at right here before I clean the machine, just to know if I need to replace it. So this, this blade is good and sharp. Um, if it is dull, we would replace it. Uh, but first I'm gonna wash this. All 
All right, we're gonna go ahead and flip this blade over. I'm gonna do that by removing this latch opening, removing the banding off of the bolts, the nut. Then we're going to just lift the squeegee off the retainer, slide it through and remove it. While I have that off, I'm gonna go ahead and inspect the inner blade as well. The inner blade is there to create vacuum. And what we're looking for is tears, rips, or anywhere where it's not in contact with the floor. If it is, we can flip the blade, but note that there's different numbers of slots on each side, so water pickup may be changed. To remove that, we're gonna adjust all the, take all these thumb screws off. Now these need to be pretty snug, but not too tight. Now that I've rotated my squeegee blade, I'm gonna put this back on the machine and check for adjustment. If we were in a situation where the blade needed to be replaced, on a PM, I prefer to do the kit. The kit comes with both the inner blade and the outer blade, as well as the casters. They are available as individuals. So to check for adjustment, I wanna put the squeegee on, taking care not to over tighten the squeegee knobs. And we're gonna check this under vacuum. So I'm gonna put the hose back on the machine, make sure my recovery tank is sealed, turn the machine on, lower the squeegee, and go forward slowly. What I wanna see is a nice even flare across the length of the squeegee. Hey, so now we're gonna talk about the recovery tank on this walk behind auto scrubber. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna open this lid, flip it forward, and I'm gonna go ahead and inspect the gasket. Make sure that there's no cracks, no tears. Taking a good look at the lid, make sure that there's no cracks. If there's any debris on this lid, you would wanna clean it off. One of the benefits of this clear recovery lid is the operator can see into the recovery tank and see if there is excessive foam or debris building up. All right, so the gasket looks good. If it did need to be replaced, it's a simple press on, no adhesives needed. Lid looks good. Then I'm gonna to move to the inside of the recovery tank. We've obviously drained it. All right, I'm gonna inspect this hose, make sure that there's no visible cuts or damage. Drain saver basket, pop this out. Gonna look in here, flap is still attached, so that's good. Basket's not damaged in any way. Baffle in the tank looks good, stainless steel. This is the lid going into your vacuum motor protection. My lid's good, no cracks, no damage. The O-ring that is supposed to be here is in place. I'm also going to inspect the filter. This white filter serves a couple of good purposes. One, you can see right here with this dark stain is it filters out any sediment, any dry debris. When you first turn the auto scrubber on, if it's not wet, it's gonna filter this debris out so it doesn't go into your vacuum motor. This one's looking good. When you start to see that debris, the dirt starting to come through the top side, you're gonna to wanna to throw this away and replace it with a new OEM filter from Factory Cap. I've removed my lid, the white filter, and then there's also this stainless steel retaining clip that's held down with a couple of little hand screws. What that does is it keeps your filter in place, or the strainer screen, excuse me, that holds your ping pong. Okay, check this, there is a gasket here, make sure that that's in good shape. We intentionally do this as a drop-in so that it's not accidentally knocked off of the machine. 
put that back in, stain the steel retaining ring, and then I'm gonna replace these hand screws, replace the filter, replace the lid. Now that we've taken care of the recovery tank inspection, we're gonna go ahead and drop down and check out the drive tires on both sides, as well as the two rear casters. So the thing you wanna look for with your drive tires, you obviously wanna make sure that there's plenty of tread, but you also wanna roll the machine around and make sure that the tire has not been pitted or chunked from driving over rough surfaces, okay? So we're gonna inspect those tires. You can see right here exactly what I'm talking about. If we can zoom in, there is a hole on the tire, a defect. Okay, that's something you want to note. Right now, it might not cause any interruption to service of the auto scrubber, but it is something that you want to note. Make the operator and the owner of the machine aware so that they can keep an eye on it. Also, when you're inspecting a machine, your casters on the rear end here. You want to inspect on both sides. Might not be able to get a good shot of it, but underneath there is a Zert fitting for a grease gun to get in there. You want to grease both casters as well as part of the preventative maintenance. Hey, now it's time to talk about your batteries and how to do a proper PM on your batteries. A couple of things of note first and foremost is that you want to remove any jewelry you might be wearing. Necklace, wedding ring, pinky ring, watch. You also want to have the proper protective equipment on. So you want to be wearing chemical resistant gloves. We're using black nitrile today. You also want to have on safety glasses. If you choose to have an apron or anything above and beyond, that's fine. Battery orientation is very important. You're going to be noting the specific gravity on each one of these battery cells so that you can see what type of shape the electrolyte is in. This is battery one, battery two, battery three, and battery four. Every machine, you should start with battery one being where the main positive battery cable is coming out of the controller and connecting. Battery one, cell A. What we're gonna do by using a simple hydrometer is we're going to squeeze the plunger and suck up the battery electrolyte. And we're gonna be looking for the specific gravity referenced right here, 1.225. We have a universal chart, 1.225 means that this battery cell is 70% discharged. It's important to note that when you're testing these batteries that you would like to have had the machine charged prior to checking your batteries. The other thing that I'm noting is the clarity of the electrolyte and if there is any debris or particles or if the electrolyte is cloudy. That's something that we're gonna note for each individual cell and for all four batteries. Squirt the electrolyte back in. Note that electrolyte level reading on your sheet. And then we're going to put the plunger into the next cell and repeat the process. Another important step when you're doing a preventive maintenance visit is that you want to check the battery terminals, the battery cables, and also make sure that the nuts securing the cable to the battery posts are set to 11 foot-pounds using a torque wrench. We'll show you how that's done. You're going to remove the protective booties around the wires. Okay. Looking at this terminal, what I'm looking for is any corrosion that might be on this terminal. If there's corrosion on there, obviously you want to clean it off and spray it with a terminal protectant. Also, when I'm inspecting these wires, I'm looking for any corrosion, any abrasion or fraying that might expose the, uh, the wires inside of the cable. And really something important to pay attention to is to make sure that you don't see any bulbs in the wire themselves, almost like what a snake's belly would look like after it had a big meal. Okay, so I'm gonna check each one of these terminals. Remember, buy American, buy Factory Cat. 